Yo, what is up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to download T3 on the PC and how to set it up so it's not really laggy and just make the game overall playable. So first we're going to want to go to bluestacks.com slash downloads HTML. Ignore the big blue download button. We're going to want to scroll down to Bluestacks 5. You're going to want this version right here called PIE 64 bit. When we download that, a little thing is going to come up on the bottom. Wait for that to finish. I click on it. It's going to say, do you want this app to make changes to your device? Click yes and click install now. Once our download's done, Bluestack should open up right away. You'll see it at the bottom here. So now that we're in, we're going to want to go straight to settings. I go to custom cores and no matter how many cores you have on your computer, it's good to put eight. My computer only has eight cores, but trust me, it's not going to destroy your computer or brick anything. Eight cores here is great. For the RAM allocation, you're going to want to go to Task Manager by right clicking the bottom. Task Manager. Head to the Performance tab. Go to Memory. And you see this number at the top right? That's how much memory you have on your computer. I like to use about 75% of my memory. So 32, I'm going to put about 24 in here. If you have 16, I recommend about 12 or so. 24,000. Performance mode, high performance. Enable high frame rate. Might as well turn this up. Enable VSync, all this is good here. You can go save changes, restart now. Once it boots back up, you can go back to the settings here. Go to display. You're gonna want this on 1600 by 900. It'll make your game less laggy. I like to go for the default cursor. Head to graphics and you're likely gonna want OpenGL. If the game's really laggy for you, you can test out DirectX and Vulkan. This is also good on auto. You're gonna wanna keep software decoding here. Make sure that this is on, prefer dedicated GPU. And we're gonna to wanna to go to preferences here, allow blue stacks to show ads during gameplay. We're gonna to wanna to turn that off and click disable here on the left. And the rest of our options in here are gonna be good. So you can come right back out and head to the Play Store. You're gonna to wanna to log in real quick. If you don't already have a Play Store account, you're gonna to have to go ahead and make one. You can also get the game from taptap.io slash mobile if you don't wanna to go to the Play Store. Once that download's done, we're going to go ahead and click play. The game's going to ask you some basic setup stuff for the first time downloading the game on the device. And it's going to go ahead and download a little bit more. Now that we're in the game, you can sign in through Google or TapTap, -tap, whichever is your preferred method. Or you can log in as a guest if you want to get this done quickly. We'll go ahead and log in. And now we're in the game here. The first thing I like to do, go to options, graphics, turn this down to normal. Super high is going to be pretty laggy. You can raise it later if you're having good FPS on the normal. Another thing we're going to want to do is down to a solo training game. Now if you exit out of full screen, you'll see on the right here, there's a little keyboard. Hover over it, it says game controls. We're going to want to click that. On screen controls, we'll have that on for now, but we're going to turn it off later. But you can go to controls editor. And here's where we have all of our controls. So when we click and drag a button here called tap spot, you can put that on the buttons on your screen. So for here, I'll drag the button to my ability and then it allows you to press a key. So let's say I want my ability on Q. Now in game, when I press Q, it'll use that ability. So I'm just gonna set up my keybinds here and leave out the shoot button for now. We're gonna wanna take over the D-pad here. You can resize it with this thing on the right. Put that right here, make sure it lines up properly. You're going to be walking sideways on accident. And down here on the D-pad, we're going to want to click settings. Activation time and activation speed. There might be values in here already for you. This will basically add delay. So the top one, activation time, we're going to want to set that to zero. Activation speed, you know, just set it to a bunch of nines, bro. Get that really high. And that'll make it so our joystick is movable. It's actually moving around when I'm tapping the keys. Not taking any delay. Now for the fire button. There's this thing called aim, pan, shoot. You can drag that on our screen. This is where you can set your sensitivities. I like to drop mine down to 0.7. It feels a little bit cleaner, less glitchy. I set my button here to control. What this button's gonna do is when you press this key, it'll allow you to look around with your mouse. So previously you had to look around by clicking. You have to go over and click the shoot button. And it's very awful. Now, if I press control, I'm in first person mode. I can move around with the mouse freely. Now let's get to that shoot button. In the aim, pan, and shoot settings, right here in the bottom left, there's going to be this little mouse down here. Fire with left click. You're going to want to enable that. 
and click that little button there, which will give you a mouse button on the screen. And take that, drag it on your mouse, on your shoot button. Now we should be all set with keybinds. Now the next step we're gonna do, I have a link in the description for the intelligent RAM cleaner. You can copy and paste this up here, put it in your search bar, and make sure at the end of it, you remove the capital O. That's gonna give you this download, open it up. You're gonna have to extract it. Now that we have that in your Windows search bar, you can look up intelligent standby list cleaner. It's gonna look about like this for you. What this app basically does is there's a standby list which uses up your RAM. As you see here, my system has 32 gigabytes. But on the standby list and working sets is 12 whole gigabytes and I only have four left. That's going to make my T3 lag a lot. You can go ahead and click purge standby list. It basically clears out all the apps that aren't being used. All the dumb stuff that's sitting on your PC using up memory when it shouldn't be. Now I have 16 gigabytes left over. If I go in task manager here, you see I got a lot of space for my blue stacks to run smoothly. So you can open this up, purge your standby list whenever you're lagging in the game. You're going to see that BlueStacks uses up a lot of this standby list and it's good to clear it out after a while. The next tip to make T3 run a little bit faster is on the home screen. You can tap and hold T3 Arena, go to App Info, go down to Storage, and Clear Cache. That's going to make your game feel a little bit smoother. It'll prevent crashes that won't be happening as often. Now that we cleared our RAM and cleared the cache, the game should be feeling a lot smoother. Running 60 FPS on normal graphics. Head over to graphics here, try it on high. Give it a second to get used to high. Now we're running a nice 55 FPS now. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys some general PC optimization, specifically for BlueStacks to make your game run a little bit smoother. So for BlueStacks on the desktop, we're gonna right click it, head down to properties, Go to compatibility, disable full screen optimizations. We want to click that on then go to change high DPI settings. Make sure we check override high DPI scaling behavior. Want that to be on as well. Click OK and click apply. Then we're going to go to the Windows search bar and look up graphics settings. And here we're going to want to have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that is turned on. Now down here, we're going to go to Browse, find our C drive, Program Files, BlueStacks underscore NXT. Then in here, we're going to look for the BlueStacks.exe, and you see there's a lot of them. The one we're looking for is hd-player.exe. So we'll click that, go to Options, and it's going to allow us to set our power saving or high performance mode. Make sure we set this to high performance. Now on your desktop, go to the video control panel by right-clicking the background. Press into video control panel in 3D settings, low latency mode. Make sure we have this one on ultra here. Texture filtering, we're gonna go and turn this off. Texture filtering LOD bias, that on allow. Texture filtering quality, make sure we have this on high performance. Everything else should be fine for here. Now we're gonna go to adjust image setting with preview at the top. Use my preference, emphasizing slide this all the way to performance. You're gonna see the picture get a little bit nastier. That's what we want for our game to run smooth. Apply. After that, we're gonna head over to background apps in our window search bar. Let apps run in the background. Make sure this is off. It's gonna run all this crap in the background, which lags you out. Next, we're gonna go back to the task bar, right click the bottom, go to task manager. And on the startup tab here, you'll see every app that starts up right when you turn on your computer. Just be conscious of which apps you have on startup. If you have Cortana startup, whatnot, you can click it, go to disable. Make sure you have all this stuff on disabled, except things you really need. Down here where it says heavy snow for me, it shows all this new stuff. You can right click, news and interests, go to turn off. It's gonna make your PC run a little bit smoother. It's not pulling this data from online. Next, we're gonna go to the window search bar and do power and sleep. Advanced power settings on the right. Favors high performance, might use more energy, a laptop might get hotter or die faster, but this is going to boost your FPS by a lot. Go ahead and close that. We're going to go to Windows Settings, look up Game Mode, open up Game Mode Settings, make sure we have Game Mode turned on. On the left side here, Xbox Game Bar, go ahead and turn that off, unless you're specifically using it and you know that you want it on. Game Bar lags you out really bad. 
yeah, that's all I got for general PC optimization. I'm gonna head over to the optional things, the things that you don't really need to do, but are gonna help out your game a fair bit. So yeah, let's get to it. So there's one more setting we're gonna to wanna to change on our desktop. I think this only works with NVIDIA GPUs. If it works for AMD GPUs, I don't know how to do it. So I'm sorry about that. We're gonna to wanna to go to NVIDIA control panel. And there's actually an older setting that was removed recently. It should be at the top of the manage 3D settings tab called image sharpening. And you see here, I don't have it. What we're gonna to wanna to do is look up in the bottom, reg edit for the registry editor. Once we're in our registry editor, so we're going to want to go to this link here called computer HK local machine systems, yada, yada, yada slash FTS. I'm going to leave this in the description below. You're going to be able to just copy it, paste it up here, press enter. It'll take you right to this folder I'm in. Now there's a lot of D word files here. The one we're looking for here is enable GR535. We're going to want to double click that. The value is going to be on one. We're going to set that to zero. All we're doing here is enabling this NVIDIA control panel setting that we're looking for. So now that we open up the video control panel, you can see your image sharpening appears. We're not going to want to turn it on right here, right away. We're going to want to go to program settings. And right here, you'll be able to choose what applications to apply this to. You're going to see blue stacks fairly quickly. If you don't see it right away, you can go to add. Double click on blue stacks. It'll show app player HD player .exe. Now that we're in here, Image sharpening, we can finally go ahead and turn this on. I like to turn it up to 0.7. It makes my game feel really, really smooth. Ignore film green, up to 0.25 as well. Click OK and apply. So now that we've applied this, we can go back into T3 here. I can already tell the game looks a little bit cleaner. Edges are going to look a little bit sharper instead of looking all pixelized. It's on low graphics and I'm playing on 1600 resolution. The game's going to look really grainy, but this way everything will look a little bit cleaner. And I'll show an example right here. So here we are back in the game. Should look a little bit better, a little bit more playable. And as always, if you have a better PC, you could just turn up your graphics to high. But this is just one of the ways to make low graphics a little bit more playable. You see there's actually detail on these characters now that we turned on this setting. Looks a lot better than normal graphics. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys for today. Hope it works for you. If not, let me know in the comments. I have a couple more things we can do. There's a couple different emulators that work better for different people. So I can show a tutorial on how to get some of those in the future. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.